okay, I couldn't believe it. After a lifetime of wishing, I, Terry Silverman, was going to meet my idol, the person that determined the trajectory of my life. I was going to meet Mary Poppins. <laughs> Today, I will pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the United Kingdom of Julie Andrews. <laughs> when I first saw Mary Poppins and the Sound of Music, it made me believe in magic, in happy endings, that anything was possible. It fueled my imagination. It made my childhood bearable. And at age five, I decided that I wanted to be English. <laughs> Act and fly. And so my quest began. I decided I would become an actress. I dreamed of flying and meeting Julie Andrews. I used my Mary Poppins umbrella every windy day, and I would take leaps off dirt cloud, dirt clod mounds. One day it was so windy that my feet did lift off a little, so I knew it was possible, and I just thought I have to practice more and run faster and leap higher. I was the only one in my bird, bluebird troop that could do an English accent. This gave me cachet because I felt like a freak. I was the only Jew in Chula Vista. I had no brothers and sisters. My parents were divorced. I had buck teeth. I lived in an apartment. And my mother did not look like the other mothers. She wore go-go boots and hot pants. So today, I get to be in a room with Julie Andrews for a few hours. And it's because of my work. I teach writing and performance, and my student, who is a Broadway actress, is reading the stage directions, and some way, somehow, she knew what it would mean to me, so she got me in. I'm the only person there that's not supposed to be there. I don't have a job, I don't have a role, and all I knew was that I had to be professional. I had to act with decorum, dignity, and maturity. I could not be the ecstatic, fanatic, five-year-old child meeting my idol. <laughs> Nor wear it. <laughs> Even though I physically could. This is my pinafore from when I was five. And I am there to be an observer, an invited guest who is interested in the creative process and, if need be, a dramaturg because I know how to do that. And I w enter the rehearsal room and there's a hum of energy, toned men and women buzzing and chatting and laughing. And I don't see my student, Cynthia. And I sit on a metal chair and just before my butt hits the seat, I hear, hello. And I look, and it's her. Julie Andrews is standing right next to me, saying hello, and she asks me, how are you? And I say the truth. I say, I am cold. And then I think, no, 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 that sounds awful. That sounds like a complaint. That sounds like you are ungrateful. And so I quickly add, but I am very happy to be here. And she takes my hand. And then she rubs my shoulders the way somebody that loves you would. And I can't believe her grace and her warmth. And then I notice she greets every single person who walks into the room because it is important to her for us to feel comfortable. And not only is she the gracious host, but she is doing double duty. Her husband is directing this musical, Blake Edwards, 
breakfast at Tiffany's, Pink Panther, and he is now in a wheelchair. So she is his guide, his cheerleader, his supporter. And the rehearsals begin, and it's a jazzy 1920s gangster musical. And then they take a break. And because this seems to be the most perfect day of my life, I walk to the snack table at the exact same time that Julie does. And it's just her and I. We are alone together, sharing the same airspace. And she pulls a bag of tea bags out of her bag, and she asks me if I would like some tea, PG Tips decaf. And I say, yes, I would. Because I can't, you know, you start hearing that voice, and then, you know, it makes you want to do it. And so we sipped tea, and I told her, you know, the songs were fun and lively. And then somebody came up to her and asked her a question. And she smiled. And we sat down again. And during the second act, I was really trying to pay attention, but I started thinking of that scene in Mary Poppins where they jump into the drawing, Bert and Mary and the children. And they jump into this fantastical world where penguins can sing and horses gallop off the carousel. And I realize the whole reason I've always wanted to act, the reason that I became an actress, it wasn't to act. It was because I wanted to jump into the story. Because if you jump into the story, you're transported. I wanted to leave my sadness and my loneliness of being an only child, wishing that I could see my father who is 3,000 miles away. And everything came together in the presence of the woman that was the catalyst for my dreams. The chalk drawing scene ends when it's washed away in the rain. And that really defines the magic of inspiration. It's the opposite of fear and depression and sadness. It makes us move and act. And it connects us to the life force. We feel alive. And we want to cheer. We want a need for our breath to be taken for just a moment. I hug and kiss my student, Cynthia. Julie and Blake and the composers are sitting huddling, so I don't want to interrupt them. I exit their world with my Julie Andrews tea bag. <laughs> and I can't wait to jump into another story. Thank you. This is not the actual tea bag because that is way too valuable, so this is a prop.